Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and as you can see from your screen and the title of the video, we got our first snowfall, so we're going to test out the Detail K2 Avalanche snowplow on the front of the Chevy Colorado. So, first snowfall of the season, probably got, I don't know, one to two inches, nothing crazy, so we obviously won't be testing out the entire capabilities of this plow. But we will uh, we'll get it set up. I'll give you some first initial impressions. And this is the first time I'm using a plow ever. So if there are any of you guys in the comment section that do this more often, please feel free to give me some tips and uh, go easy on me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the plow set up. So we pulled the truck outside and first things first, we're gonna go ahead, unlatch the hood and set up our electrical boxes. So. I keep mine in the garage when it's not in use and we'll go ahead and just connect these guys up here and then drag our plow out. As always we'll get started, we'll take off our battery terminals first so we can connect up our control boxes. Start with your negative end first always, just take a 10 mil, loosen this guy up, up here, already pre-loosened it and then we can just slide this guy off. Set this guy down here. And then we can crack open this guy. And as you recall, we don't connect down to here. For our winch controller, we actually connect back here, so we have to remove this entire cover. There are these two tabs right here. Press them in, lift up, and right here is where we are going to connect. So from what I recall from our install video, this was slightly larger than 10 mils, which it is. So let me get the correct socket and we'll get that guy off as well. And 13 mils are winner. So we'll go ahead and disconnect this guy up here. And we're gonna wanna remove this guy completely as we'll be connecting our positive lead to that guy right there. So. Go ahead and grab our box full of controllers and get it set up. And then with our power box that we got from downstairs, I know it looks like a mess, but only thing to note is you got your negative leads right here and then your positive lead with the 35 amp breaker connected right here. So we'll go ahead and set this guy in our engine bay, connect up our positive end first and then we'll connect our negative end of our battery after that. And when you connect your positive end, I always forget, I probably should go rewatch my video when I first installed it, where I have this wire coming out of because I don't want it to get pinched. Uh, but I also want to be able to close the cover on this positive area, so uh, let's see if we can have this guy somewhat out here. I think I remember something like this. We'll uh, tighten this guy up and get our negative end after. We'll just do a quick check with this guy. Yeah, that close is good enough. We just don't want anything sparking on us. So we will get this guy covered back on. Swap back over to our 10 mil. And what we're going to do is as we reconnect the negative terminal of our battery, we are going to connect our winch also. And with that, we should have power to our winch and controller so everything looks good we'll go ahead shut our hood carefully and grab our plow 
So this is our main winch wiring. We'll go ahead and leave it out. Make sure you're not going near any of the bumpers, just because when we close our hood, we know that's going to be a hard stop point. So anywhere just around there should be okay. And what you want is to leave a good amount hanging out right there. And then the next thing to do will just to be rolling our plow to line up our receiver over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I leave these stiffeners attached to the frame so that way once we're up and connected we're all set to go. So let's uh, make sure you guys can see this in frame. Yeah, so we've got this pin right here that's used for storage. We'll go ahead, pop this guy out, get that removed because this guy gets used on the receiver hitch itself. So. We will go ahead and line this guy up. And slide it into the slot. Okay, so advice time because I'm new to this too. Step one, connect up your power to the winch, start up your truck, and let the winch out a little bit so that way you get some slack in this line. That allows for this guy to pivot more freely and you can get it into the hitch receiver on the front of your truck. I was trying to just manhandle and pull it and with too much tension on the line, you can't get a good angle to pull it in. But regardless, we have everything hooked up right there. I'm gonna go ahead, raise our plow, and get our wheels off the ground. So, and that's the damaged remote, but still works. There, we're up. Go ahead and pop this pin out. This guy in the in use position. And this is all just a recap of what was in the initial setup video, but I figure might as well go through it again as well. And you'll also want to lift up this pin back here. So that way it's not dragging on the ground. So with that, I say we uh, hop into the truck and let's make some passes. Now the thing I've been waiting for the most about this experience. Seat on, steering wheel on. So I'll go ahead, shift into four low. I mean, we don't really have any snow, to be brutally honest. That it would make that much of a difference. Uh, for four low shift into neutral. I should have known that one. Hop into neutral. Here, kicking in. Okay. We got four low going. Uh, if you guys in the comments know how to plow and know a better way to do it, well, let me know. So, I will uh, get you guys set up and we'll, we'll get started. See what we got. So, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I am at a terrible angle. So let's just go ahead and see what we got. Got a quick flip. Make sure no one's coming. Throw it in reverse, bring the winch in, and we'll back up.
Uh, you know, it's not too, too bad from what you guys can see right there. Uh, I know I definitely need to practice, that's for sure. But, uh, I think our adjustments look halfway decent. So let's go ahead and we'll get more of the right side. So I'm gonna put my plow winch out on the remote. And you can feel kind of when it hits the ground right there. I'll make another pass. Just going nice and slow. And I have my plow going just straight. I don't have it angled or anything crazy like that. And we honestly don't have a ton of snow. So who knows if I'm gonna be doing anything right. So put it in reverse, bring the plow in, and we'll back up. And honestly, I'm learning as we go along, so go ahead, make a couple of more passes. So I'll kick you guys back on when I uh, hop out of the truck and take a look at my handiwork. So some quick lessons learned. Just keep it in four high, you should be okay. And we'll see what we've got. Um, yeah, looks like a mess. But, I mean, it is better. I went on the grass a little bit right there. Um, for a first pass, I mean, it's not too, too bad. Luckily, everyone in the house has an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicle, so it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, I still need the snow thrower, that's for sure. And I need to kind of work out my lines and angles. I mean, hey, this main stretch, usually this takes forever. Um, not too too bad uh, I am curious though if I need to lower my skid shoes so these guys down here because I don't know if I'm getting as close to the ground as I would like um, I mean in some places you can see we are down to the bare driveway so I might just keep it like this um, Obviously, if you have a gravel driveway or something like that, you want to leave a little bit of snow on there. Otherwise, you're going to just be digging up your driveway. But because we have a nice flat surface to work with right here, um, we should be uh, should be okay with that. Um, I still have areas like the back patio, the front walk, that I need to do with the snowblower. But this definitely cuts down on the time that it takes to do everything. Um, Back dragging, let's take a look um, up here, because this is a spot where I use the back drag technique. That's one of the reasons why I chose this plow, it's because I do have a lot of areas like up against garages and stuff like that. Ignore the uh, private jet flyover up there. But, hey, I think this worked out pretty well. Um, obviously, I gotta work on getting to the absolute edge, but for a first go around, I don't think it's that bad. So, initial reactions of it, obviously, as a novice in the plowing game, I mean, I don't think it did too, too bad. Uh, you guys can be the judge of that. A lot of this first time around is gonna be just operator error and inexperience, but for a plow, just for around the house, if you got a big drive, um, not so many tight maneuvers, perhaps. Uh, it's definitely a way to get it going to where you like it. So, um, granted the snow wasn't that much. We had probably about an inch or so. But good practicing weather, I'll put it that way. So, overall, uh, happy with it. When we get a little bit more snow, maybe we'll do a little bit deeper dive into some of its capabilities. And hopefully by then, I'll have a little bit more practice under my belt. But, overall, uh, pretty... Pretty uh, happy with it, looking forward to some upcoming snow, that way I can practice with that as well. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, give it a share. Hopefully this helps in your decision making process because I know there aren't too many videos on the Detail K2 Avalanche series of universal snow plows, but overall not too bad. Let me know your questions uh, in the comments, I can try to answer them as best I can. 
And if you are a an experienced plow person, feel free to throw some suggestions, comments in there. So we're running uh, four high at the moment. I mean, there's not too much snow. I've been trying to keep it relatively slow, like maybe five miles an hour max when I'm plowing with this guy. Uh, let me know if that's too much or too little, whatever. Um, so with that, uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.